Greetings from Dr. Mahadev Desai. Today we are going to discuss pulmonary tuberculosis. Even though the topic mentioned is pulmonary tuberculosis, we will be discussing tuberculosis as a whole. Tuberculosis cases are increasing in India and majority of the cases are pulmonary tuberculosis. The burden of tuberculosis across the globe is very high and India leads the statistics. As it is seen in this table, the global tuberculosis report of 2017 which has included the data till 2016 show that the incidence of tuberculosis in India annually is around 28 lakhs as against the global of 1 crore. That means India contributes to almost 27 to 28 percent of the cases of tuberculosis. Mortality due to tuberculosis is also very high, close uh, more than 4 lakhs than the Multi-drug resistant tuberculosis incidence is also increasing and it's now almost 1.5 lakhs. And co-infection of tuberculosis and HIV is to the tune of 87,000 patients a year. Looking to the burden of tuberculosis in India, the government of India has proactively decided to make tuberculosis a notifiable disease. So all medical practitioners, laboratory personnel and pharmacists have to inform the health authorities about a new case of tuberculosis since March 2018. When we talk of pulmonary tuberculosis, we are going to include primary tuberculosis, reactivation tuberculosis, laryngeal tuberculosis, endobranchial tuberculosis and tuberculoma. But major focus will be on reactivation tuberculosis which is the main form of presentation in most of the adult patients. What is tuberculosis? We know tuberculosis is caused by the bacteria called mycobacterium tuberculosis. There are also other mycobacteria like, like M. bovis, but which forms almost 10% of the patients of tuberculosis. Majority are M. tuberculosis by mycobacterium and they are aerobic, non-spore forming, non-motile, acid fast bacilli, they are called intracellular rods. Pulmonary tuberculosis mainly present in three of the ways, either primary pulmonary tuberculosis mainly seen in children, progressive primary pulmonary tuberculosis also seen mostly in children, while in adults what we see is called post primary or reactivation tuberculosis. Let us see how tuberculosis is transmitted. Whenever a person coughs, sneezes, speaks or sings having a tuberculosis infection in himself. He is going to spread droplet. These are the droplets which are going to affect the close contacts of the people who are at the highest risk of getting infected. A patient with active pulmonary tuberculosis can expel almost 0.5 to 5 micron diameter droplets and each single cough or sneeze can release up to 3000 droplets. Each of these droplets can transmit the disease and inhaling as less as 10 bacteria can also cause an active tuberculosis infection. How tuberculosis is caused? A person who contacts tuberculosis through exposure of aerosols to the lungs or the mucous membranes. The tuberculous organisms are then ingested by the alveolar macrophages which then try to attempt to phagocytize the bacilli and contain the infection. The Possible outcomes of such an infections are 3, 4 to 4 fold. First, if the person's immune status is good, the infection will be contained and patient will not develop active disease that is called latent tuberculosis. But if the patient's immune status is not that good, there may be a subclinical or self-limited infection at the local site in the lung, usually near the hilum and that forms the primary tuberculosis also called Gohn's complex which is usually seen in children. Then progressive primary pulmonary tuberculosis is one in which some of the patients the macrophilar pulmonary macrophages are unable to contain the bacilli and they are overall leading to clinically apparent infection. While post primary or reactivation tuberculosis is what we see in the most of the adult patients because after having a latency for a long time this Patients immune status become weak for one or the other reasons and active tuberculosis results which is called post primary or reactivation tuberculosis. 
let's see the clinical features of different types of tuberculosis the primary tuberculosis as we have said earlier it's self limited and usually seen in children children may present with very vague symptoms of fever malaise weight loss cough and hemoptysis occasionally a good or smart proactive pediatricians can pick up this otherwise it can may be passed as an ordinary respiratory tract infections which is quite frequent in children the natural history of primary infection is 90% of the individuals go into a latent phase because of the intact immunity which control the replication of the bacilli but 10% of them may develop tuberculous pneumonia which infiltrates at the site of the initial seeding usually near the hilum there may be hilar lymphadenopathy and this tuberculosis can spread to the distant sites either cervical lymph nodes meningitis pericarditis or miliary dissemination so progressive primary tuberculosis is the extension of primary tuberculosis because of the weaker immune system here the patient becomes acutely ill and they may have extensive lung involvement as well as the other systems involvement and a child may develop hypoxia or even death the post primary or reactivation tuberculosis is a very gradual onset illness and usually develops within either the first two years of the primary infection or may take many years of latency and then manifest the symptoms again become very vague to begin with patients may have complain of anorexia lethargy weight loss low grade fever it's only when he starts with cough hemoptysis or hoarseness of voice he bring these symptoms to the notice of his doctor and the investigation starts when somebody is examined at this stage he may have anemia he may have clubbing of fingers is the respiratory system which may pick up certain signs like there may be a decreased chest movements on the affected side the vocal parameters may be reduced maybe there is a dull note on percussion because the underlying consolidation or fibrosis and there may be few to widespread crepitations so findings are very very non specific and you need a high index of suspicion to get the investigation complications are many tuberculosis can lead to pneumothorax can lead to bronchiectasis can lead to extensive pulmonary destruction the most widely destroyed x-ray pictures are usually because of the tuberculosis then there may be a malignancy on a long run from the scar of the tuberculosis focus in the past and one of the important complication is chronic pulmonary aspergillosis a fungal infection which is occurring in the tuberculosis lesions of the past who definition of tuberculosis is worth remembering any patient who presents with sign symptoms suggestive of a productive cough for more than 2 weeks which may be accompanied by other respiratory symptoms like shortness of breath like chest pain or hemoptysis and constitutional symptoms like loss of appetite weight loss fever night sweats and fatigue should be considered as tuberculosis suspect because all these symptoms point to a diagnosis of pulmonary tuberculosis provided other conditions are ruled out so it calls for investigation while a diagnosis or a definite case of tuberculosis is one where the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex has been identified either in a clinical specimen like a sputum or any of the body fluids and then by culture the presence of tuberculosis bacilli are shown or maybe there are newer methods which we'll see in detail later on in the talk these are called the molecular line probe assay wherein the polymerase chain reaction based test which gives the very quicker and definite diagnosis so tuberculosis suspect and tuberculosis definite case is to be remembered investigations are many and as i said earlier all these investigations are not necessarily only in the case of pulmonary tuberculosis all extra pulmonary tuberculosis also exemplary the sputum examinations calls for the investigation so sputum examination is the cornerstone of pulmonary tuberculosis any person who brings about the sputum has to be tested first with sputum smear examinations by the method called zill nansen method or zn method for acid fast bacilli 
Chest X-ray is equally important but may not confirm the diagnosis. Tuberculin test or also called Montux test is a very important test to show that patient has been exposed to tuberculosis. It may not differentiate between a latent tuberculosis and an active tuberculosis. Same way interferon gamma release assay called IGRA or popularly known as TB gold test also indicates the presence of exposure to tuberculosis in past or present. The PCR based test on the sputum which are called nucleic acid amplification test are the revolution for the fast diagnosis of tuberculosis again we will talk later. Then sputum for culture conventionally as we were in the microbiology in our formal years we knew that tuberculosis bacteria require a long time to grow on the solid media. The media is LJ medium, Lowenstein Jensen medium. Then came the Bactec medium which is a liquid medium which uses the mycobacterium growth indicator tube called MGI tube and that diagnoses the tuberculosis in a less than a week's time. But the later on came the nucleic acid amplification test. The overall the diagnosis is based on combination of sputum smear examination, tuberculin test, sputum for PCR test or cultures and radiography. Many times you need to combine all this to come to a diagnosis of tuberculosis especially in extrapulmonary tuberculosis since the important test of sputum smear is out maybe we need to get the help of the other test. When it comes to sputum smear remember we need minimum two samples and one of them should be early morning sample because early morning sample has the greatest yield for mycobacterium tuberculosis. So whenever a sputum smear is asked for insist for an early morning sample and as shown in this slide the tuberculous bacilli are seen as red rods in the slide under ZN stain. Chest radiogram may be useful but important thing is it cannot confirm the diagnosis it may be highly suggestive of tuberculosis and there are many presentations in x-ray. Usually the most important site is the apex of the right side because of the entry of tuberculosis in an area which are too much of oxygen but less of blood that is how the tuberculous organisms rest. So apical or posterior segment of the upper lobe or superior segment of the lower lobe is the site where you get the maximum findings on x-ray. But we may find cavity effusion, miliary tuberculosis, extensive destruction or pneumothorax in different cases. The next slide will show the different presentations on x-ray. Be it a primary pulmonary tuberculosis which is very small not so easily seen on an x-ray is usually a small area of consolation near the hilum or there may be a cavity. Tuberculous cavity are usually a thin walled cavity while pleural effusion is very obviate by the obliteration of the costophrenic angle, we may find extensive fibrocatary tuberculosis or extensive destructions and the most important and deadly complications of tuberculosis is a hematogenous spread of tuberculous bacilli which is seen as miliary tuberculosis. Tuberculin test or called Montox test is an important test still performed because of the cost. It uses a tuberculous antigen which is called purified protein derivative PPD where we use 0.1 ml or 5 tuberculin units. Conventionally it is tested on the left forearm polar surface. If that is for one or the other reason not available one may use the right forearm but usually the left forearm is used where a 0.1 ml of tuberculin material is injected intradermally and it is injected in such a way that about 6 to 10 millimeter of will is produced. Then the person is asked not to use soap or any detergent till it is red. And the results are usually read in 48 to 72 hours and the results are the highest dimensions on the two axes. If they are more than 10 into 10 millimeter it is considered as positive. Very importantly remember and inquire whether the person has been vaccinated with BCG vaccine because if the person has been vaccinated with BCG there may be a false positive test. Similarly sometimes patients with hematogenous spread or extensive tuberculosis 
or with immune deficiency, the test may be negative in spite of patients suffering from tuberculosis. That is called false negative test. Even in lymphoma cases or hematological malignancies, the tuberculosis test has been negative. That came the interferon gamma release assay called IGRA or TB gold test. Here the different antigens are used. The individuals who are infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis, they have lymphocytes in their blood which recognize the mycobacterium antigens. The antigens mentioned are ES86 or CFP10 or TB7.7. Upon exposure to the same antigens, the, they generate an interferon gamma which are specific to these cytokines and that is what is being tested. IGRA test, they give the idea about the T cell immunity and it is very important for the diagnosis of tuberculosis. Only thing is it may not clearly indicate that the patient is suffering from active tuberculosis, but person who has Previously negative tuberculin test or previously the IGRA test was negative and now it has become positive, it assumes importance and most of the western world they use IGRA test to find out whether the patient has latent tuberculosis and he is offered an anti-tuberculosis course because of the high incidence of HIV infections for persons who are immigrating or travelling from the area of high prevalence to those areas usually they go for IGRA test and if it is positive they are offered the treatment in the form of the anti-TB drugs. Is it possible to diagnose tuberculosis at the same time drug resistant tuberculosis and that too rapidly? Yes, as I said now with the advent of nucleic acid amplification test it is possible. Earlier we were using LJ medium which was a solid media and it used to take 6 to 8 weeks. Then came Bactec method which use MGIT and it requires 1 to 3 weeks. But with nucleic acid amplification technique, we can diagnose tuberculosis in less than 24 hours. In fact, it is less than 24 hours, but the logistic requires 24 hours. Otherwise, the actual diagnostic time that is required is 2 to 3 hours only. It is called expert MTB RIF because it is a test which has been found out first by the gene expert company. So, it is now the RNTCP that is the revised national tuberculosis program has accepted this as one of the important tests and they have named it expert MTB RIF. The sensitivity and specificity of this test is close to 95 percent. So, very very high sensitivity and specificity. Another important part is this is one test which not only detects tuberculosis bacilli, but also detects the reform patient resistance. A word about the expert MTB RIF, it is a very rapid and accurate test which identifies the presence of mycobacterium tuberculosis and resistant to reform patient at the same time the single test. A person's sputum sample is collected from the suspected patients and it is mixed with a reagent and that is provided with the assay and a cartridge containing the mixture is placed in the gene expert machine and rest of the whole process is fully automated. It is a rapid real time PCR test which identifies the targeted nucleic acid sequences in the tuberculosis genome and it provides results from the sputum in as I said earlier less than 2 hours. Not only it detects tuberculosis bacilli, it also detects a particular gene called RPOB gene. If it is present, it is a marker of reform patient resistance. So, most of the patients with reform patient resistance are also isoniazide resistance. So, practically we can pick up tuberculosis as well as MDR tuberculosis in a single test that is why it assumes importance. How do we manage tuberculosis? Tuberculosis management has changed rapidly. The basic principle that tuberculosis bacilli though they are one, but they have multiple subpopulations within the tuberculosis bacilli. So, my some tuberculosis bacilli are rapidly growing, some are slowly growing, some are active in acidic medium, some are active in alkaline medium. So, conventionally we use more than one drug. Usually four drugs are used to begin with to reduce the chances of resistance and to attack all types of 
subpopulations of tuberculous bacilli. So that the idea is to make the person sterile as early as possible because of preventing the disease to the close contact. So basic principle is select the safest and the most effective therapy and which has to be used for the shortest time to reduce the default rate. We use multiple drugs. Never ever add one single drug to a failing regimen. That is the principle and always ensure adherence to the therapy at the time of the diagnosis and the beginning of the treatment. We must spend enough time to the patient and the relatives to ensure that they adhere to the treatment till the end. The directly observed treatment short course known as DOTS is the one which is started by revised national tuberculosis control program henceforth we will be calling RNTCP. It started way back in 1997 but it has undergone many changes and the latest revision is 2017. Earlier a person from the health department used to go to the patient house and watch the swallowing of the tablets in his or her presence. The directly observed treatment ensures treatment for the entire course either in a daily regimen or intermittent regimen. If the person has to cater to many patients in his locality and he cannot cope up with everyday treatment, there is an another optional treatment called intermittent regimen. And the idea is to give the right drug in the right dose at the right intervals. But in 2017, government has made many modifications and the most important one is now it is no longer an intermittent regimen. All dots patients will receive treatment on a daily basis. And the idea is to cover 99% of the compliance and that is why now DOTS is called 99 DOTS and the intermittent therapy is discontinued. The information technology is used for the compliance. The treatment is now no longer directly observed but everyday treatment has to be informed to the toll free number where the data is automatically stored. There is a mechanism in which the, if the person fails to inform that day's medicines, he will get an SMS. Even if he does not take the medicines and if he does not respond to the SMS, then that information will go to the local supervisor and then he would visit personally and then it becomes a directly observed treatment for that particular day for that particular patient. Otherwise, the treatment is now more with IT enabled services. The WHO has given earlier the different categories, but RNTCP has again revised the criteria and the category. Now they are divided into two main categories, all patients who are new cases and patients who are the previously treated patients. So category 1 is called new patients, here either the patient is a new sputum positive patients or a new smear sputum negative patients or any new extra pulmonary tuberculosis they all form in new category or category 1 category which was earlier category 1 and 3. The second category is very important because these are the patients either who have been previously treated or they had developed relapse or their treatment has failed or they have an interrupted treatment. So previously treated patients which are called category 2 even in earlier WHO category also it was category 2 which is a very important category because these are the patients who have maximum chance of multidrug resistant tuberculosis. In RNTCP, all the NTTB drugs are given as fixed drug combination. The fixed drug combinations ensures compliance and reduce the number of tablets the patient has to swallow. So they are designated as either 4 FDC that means 4 drugs are given or 4 drugs are there in a single tablet and 3 FDC that means 3 NTTB drugs are there in one tablet. So when there is 4 FDC, the 4 drugs which are included in 4 FDC are isoniazide 75 mg, rifampicin 150 mg, ethambutol 275 mg and pyrazinamide 400 mg. In 3 FDC, pyrazinamide is not included. So patient has to remember only how many tablet he has to take and whether that tablets are 4 FDC or 3 FDC. It becomes easy to convince the patients and the layman how to take and how many tablets he has to take. Then every tablets are given right depending on the weight of the patient. So there are four weight bands 
that means a person who is weighing between 30 and 39 kg has to take two tablets every day and every strips are for 28 tablets so all strips are for four weeks so if he has two tablets to take because his weight is between 30 and 39 kg he is supplied with two strips and all these strips are also color coded so there is no confusion so any persons with 30 to 39 kg will receive yellow colored strips of two strips for one month or four weeks similarly 40 to 54 kg three tablets three strips with a blue color while 40 to 54 is blue color 55 to 70 four tablets four strips light green color and persons with more than 70 kg are given five tablets every day to be swallowed for next four weeks so they are given five strips they are all pink color so yellow blue light green and pink are the colors for the different weight bands so that is what to be ensured by the supervisor first these are the different strips as you can see and on the top of it there is mentioned 4 fdc or 3 fdc and also mentioned how many tablets the person has to take so accordingly the tablets are distributed then these tablets have got on the back side of it there are a different types of preparations in such a way that when the person take the second tablet automatically a number comes up that number is the toll free number so whenever the person swallows the tablet for that day he has to pick up that number and give a toll free number message that he has received this medicine he has to just give a call so this is called real time medication reminder device rt -M -E -R -M. so that is why it's an it enabled system and it works very well they want 99 percent of the compliance that is why it is called 99 dots so all toll free numbers are not same there will be different toll free numbers at different intervals so that the person doesn't make any mistake and all these are uh, central server and they will give immediately whether the person has received medicine or not received the medicine and as i said earlier if he doesn't receive the medicine he will get an sms if he doesn't respond to sms for the same day by afternoon or evening a supervisor will contact him and make sure that he swallows the medicine so this is what is the dots regimen now how many medicines person has to take for different categories if the person is category 1 that is all new cases new sputum positive new sputum negative and new extra pulmonary all these patients the treatment is for 6 months all treatment of tuberculosis are divided into intensive phase where we give more drugs and continuation phase where we give little less drugs the intensive phase is usually for 2 months where the person receives 4 drugs 4 FDC means 4 drugs, isoniazer, rifampicin, pyrazinamide and ethambitol. In the continuation phase, he takes 3 drugs that is isoniazer, rifampicin and ethambitol. Pyrazinamide is not included in the continuation phase. Earlier in DOTS therapy, the continuation phase there were only 2 medicines that is isoniazide and rifampicin. Even ethambitol was not there. But now all continuation phase, rifampicin is one of the important drug and ethambutal is added so now in category 1 4 drugs for 2 months 3 drugs for 4 months if the patient happens to extra pulmonary tuberculosis especially cns tuberculosis or skeletal tuberculosis he needs to take additional another 4 to 7 months depending on the evaluation by the health personnel if the person belongs to category 2 that is previously treated patients as we have said these are the patients who are likely to have mdr tb so here the intensive treatment as well as the continuation treatment are extended the intensive treatment the first two months all five drugs that is the four fdc isoniazide fampicin pyrazinamide and ethamitol plus injectable streptomycin these are five drugs are given daily for two months and the four fdc are given for one month so intensive phase itself is now 3 months and the continuation phase is for the 5 months so total person receives treatment for 8 months 2 months more than the category 1 patients to reduce the mdr cases the first line drugs the usual dosages are isoniazide 5 mg per kg body weight maximum is 300 mg 
Rifampicin is 10 mg per kilogram body weight, maximum 600 mg. Ethambutol 15 mg per kilogram body weight. Streptomycin again 15 mg per kilogram body weight. But if the patient has is more than 50 years or if the patient has renal problem, the dose has to be adjusted. Usually in streptomycin, the highest dose is 750 mg for any persons more than 50 years. And pyrazinamide is 25 mg per kilogram body weight. All these drugs are given as said earlier as a single dose and not divided doses. The adverse effects are known, you have already learnt in pharmacology, but importantly most of the NTTB drugs are hepatotoxic, something that we have to forewarn to the patients before starting the treatment. So they have to look for jaundice, they have to look for the symptoms of nausea vomiting and when a person takes rifampicin, we have to tell the patient in advance that his color of the urine will be orange to red. He should not come next day complaining that the drug is becoming now more intolerant. It's no. So, but the patients may have to be followed off with the liver function test whenever the patients have persistent symptoms of nausea vomiting or his clara is yellow or the urine for the whole day is yellow. If the person is taking rifampicin, only 6 8 hours of urine sample would be orange to red. So, isoniazide. Main important side effects are hepatitis and peripheral neuropathy, rifampicin, hepatitis, gastric upset. But importantly, all women with childbearing age, if they are on oral contraceptives, they should be forewarned that the efficacy of oral contraceptive pills may be reduced and it is better they adopt other forms of contraceptions. Ethambutal, optic neuritis, pyrazinamide is mainly hepatitis and joint pain and it may aggravate the diabetes control and streptomycin is mainly autotoxic and nephrotoxic. The management of tuberculosis in HIV patients are very important because as we have said there are almost nearly 1 lakh patients who have tuberculosis and co-infection with HIV and both make the treatment very difficult. So the first priority of HIV positive patients is to initiate tuberculosis treatment followed by cotrimexol and antiretroviral therapy that is what is dictated by WHO since 2009. So duration of treatment in a patient who have a drug susceptible infection is same as HIV negative patients depending on each category. So maybe it is either 6 months or 8 months depending on category 1 or category 2. But important thing is that treatment should be common first. Anti-TB treatment should be started first and then antiretroviral therapy as soon as possible usually within first 8 weeks of starting the TB treatment. Starting TB treatment first will reduce the chance of possible immune reconstitutional inflammatory response called IRIS. So very important start anti-TB treatment first and within 8 weeks start antiretroviral treatment provided patient has tolerated the anti-TB treatment well. Drug resistance in tuberculosis is defined as either MDR-TB or XDR-TB. MDR-TB or multi-drug resistant tuberculosis is caused by bacteria that do not respond to or at least two drugs that is isoniazide and rifampicin. While XDR tuberculosis or called extensive drug resistant tuberculosis is a form of multi-drug resistant tuberculosis which does not respond to most drugs of the first line as well as many of the second line effective anti-TB drugs. There are a list of drugs which can be used for MDR-TB and they are grouped differently but important ones are one which is mentioned here. We have been all taught about the drugs like the aminoglycosides or canamycin or amicacin or the cycloserine or ethionamide or prothionamide and many other drugs. The 2017 RMTCP guidelines let me bring to your notice an important updates in this regard. The government of India has latest revised the RNDCP regimen which has to be implemented with immediate effect regarding two important aspects of the treatment of tuberculosis in DOTS regimen. The first is the discontinuation of category 2 and second is the discontinuation of injectable from the multidrug resistant tuberculosis regimen. Let us discuss first the discontinuation of category 2. Previously category 2 was considered as a patients who were been treated previously or they were default or relapse cases. Now with this announcement the discontinuation of category 2 is made with immediate effect and all such patients are initiated on standard 6 months regimen 
that is four months of the first line drugs isoniazide rifampicin pyrisinamide and ethambutol plus two months of three drugs that is isoniazide rifampicin and ethambutol drug susceptibility testing should be conducted for at least rifampicin for all notified previously treated tb patients and the most appropriate regimen should be prescribed as per the program guidelines the dst result should not be awaited for starting the standard first line anti tb treatment this is regarding the discontinuous of category 2 now let us discuss the second important announcement earlier in mdr tb resistance whether it is mono h that is the isoniazid alone resistance or poly drug resistant that is the isoniazid and rifampicin drug resistance have been treated with injectable drugs either streptomycin or kanamycin but now after 25th december all newly enrolled patients will be treated for either h mono or poly regimen with 6 months of levofloxacin rifampicin ethambutol and pyrisinamide earlier they were treated for cifords 3 to 6 months with kanamycin levofloxacin rifampicin ethambutol and pyrisinamide and followed by 6 months of levofloxacin rifampicin ethambutol and pyrisinamide government of india has taken the initiatives to eliminate tuberculosis by 2025 in order to make this possible the tuberculosis is made a notifiable disease by all medical practitioners all laboratory and all pharmacists who dispense the drugs for new case not only it's made notifiable but failure to comply with will attract punishment under indian penal code sections 269 and 270 which includes the penalty as well as imprisonment so that's why this gazette uh, notification is shown that since march 2018 all tuberculosis cases the new cases have to be notified and also government has started with a website which is called https nixai.in so nixai.in is the website which reports the all tuberculosis programs once a patient is registered at nixai aushadi he is entitled for financial incentive as well as nutritional support to increase the treatment adherence and success rates all the benefits are transmitted and transferred directly to the patient's account via smart card for that all data are linked to the aadhar card and a tamper proof storage of users and account identity is given patient is given a smart card and all the benefits the financial benefits every monthly as well as when the patient is enrolled for the first time the there is a certain amount of cash that is to be deposited for first two months later on every monthly completion of treatment the person receives the uh, amount in his smart card through smart card in his bank account so it's very very important that the patient complies with the treatment so that we have we try to save the patient's money save his health and it's our endeavor to make sure that the government's initiative is fulfilled and let us all make tb free india